Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Uh, and today I have a video for you uh, going through how you can use Airflow and a local Kubernetes cluster to you run Kubernetes pod operator jobs locally. Uh, so common use case for a lot of people uh, out there are, you know, hey, maybe your company is using Kubernetes pod operator in production uh, because, you know, it has a ton and ton of benefits over, you know, using a salary executor for certain use cases. Um, but setting up a local Kubernetes cluster or connecting to the same external one you're using out there in the wild can be extremely annoying. Uh, it, and not only that, it can cause security issues, your companies might not support it at all. And if they don't support it at all, then you're kind of just stuck in a black box zone where, hey, you know, I want to use Kubernetes pod operator locally, but I literally can't test it because I don't have connection to the hosted cluster we're using. I don't have a local cluster running. Uh, so what am I supposed to do? That's where the data kayak comes in to save you. Um, so if you're interested in this video, if you like my stuff, please toss me a like, subscribe, helps me out immensely. But enough about that, let's get into this. Um, so a new recent release that or recent -ish release that enabled this is actually the ability to now run Kubernetes pods uh, using Docker desktop. So as most of you know, I am going to be running uh, Airflow using Astro, the Astro CLI. Uh, if you want a video on how to do that, check out one of the ones I've made. Um, but essentially the, the key difference here um, and the key thing you're going to need to set up before you do anything, even Airflow involved, is go into Docker go into your settings here, and then under Kubernetes, enable Kubernetes, and you'll need to restart your Docker engine. As you can see I've already done so, so I won't need to do that. Um, and you can always reset this if you run into some resource limits or any kind of issues there, as you are liable to do uh, when running you know, tons and tons of different airflow environments on your local machine. Um, so once you've gotten that enabled, then you're going to want to first do a little good old Astro uh, dev init in an empty folder, just create a new Airflow environment, um, and then go into your requirements.txt file and add this provider package uh, to install it. So here, 7.9.0. Uh, and then what you can do is actually start your environment. Um, so you start your Airflow environment, have it running. Um, and then once you've done that, uh, to actually set up the Kubernetes pod operator and allow you to leverage that, we're going to need to get some details from that Docker engine. And then what we're going to do is connect to the same uh, Kubernetes cluster that our current Airflow environment is running on, get that information, and then use that to de deploy a new Kubernetes pod for our Kubernetes pod operator. So the first command you're going to want to run um, is this command, which is kubectl config set context docker desktop. Um, and so what this will do is just set the context for uh, docker desktop to just make sure that we're pulling the right information from our current docker desktop environment. And then you're going to want to run this command here. And don't worry about copying these down from the screen. I will have a link in below to the guide um, on how to set this all up for yourself. So don't worry about needing to, you know, copy this. All the commands are easily copyable from that page. Um, and so once you've done this, so you'll run a cube CTL config uh, minify raw. And then what this will do is actually generate a file in the include directory dot uh, cube. Um, and if it doesn't show up, just make sure you have hidden files enabled. And this will have your certificate authority data for your current Kubernetes Docker internal server. Um, so if you want to use another Kubernetes pod, you're going to need to get this. It's going to be a similar process. Um, for getting the information and the rest of this will be the same but this is the part where if you're using anything other than the local kubernetes uh, engine then you're going to, need to change this but this is where you're going to get it for what i'm showing you today and so here the three values you'll need to get are the certificate authority data the client certificate data and the client key data okay and so once you have all these saved and you know this is always already in your include director so don't really need to worry about saving it. Um, then what you're going to do is add your files to this example json.json. And this part, again, I'm going is going to be in the description. Uh, so don't worry about copying it. Um, so here, there's basically two approaches now. Um, so here I have in this json document, um, I have this kind of format and 
this format's going to stay the same. So I guess I won't say there's two different approaches. You're going to need to create this JSON document. So here you're going to say, you know, API version one, which cluster you're using. Uh, so just again, selecting that internal server, giving it our certificate authority, uh, setting the context again, just for our local Docker desktop. So you can keep all of these the same um, other than the uh, certificate authority data, client certificate data, and client key data, which you're all just going to copy from that .cube file that we just created. So once you've got that JSON all sorted out, then it's time to actually set up our DAG to use this. And this DAG, I'm going to warn you right now, might take the cake for the simplest DAG I have ever shown you, uh, because I just want to make it super easy to understand because this is already a complicated topic. Let's not make it more complicated. Um, so you're just going to import Kubernetes pod operator from that provider package I showed you earlier. Um, and then what we're going to do is just create a simple DAG that is just going to use a Kubernetes pod operator to create an example KPO with an image of hello world. So it's just a publicly available image, set it a name, give it a task ID, cluster context, again, just that uh, Docker desktop context that I talked about earlier. And then the is delete operator pod equals true uh, because we want it to delete otherwise, or we want it to delete this pod after the operator is done running. You want to have this pod exist past when the task is done running set that to false. Um, additionally here under get logs, you're going to want to set this to true so that you have the logs propagate back into the Airflow UI. Otherwise they're gonna be stuck on that pod. Um, and to be honest, I'm not really sure how to even look at those logs. Otherwise, if you don't have them come, come back in through Airflow. Now, if you have another image that you want to use, you will actually not use these kind of Docker image name style. This is only available for uh, images that are on the Docker hub. Um, so important, you know that because if you try to just put a name in for a custom image, it's not gonna work. So if you want to pull down a custom image, make sure you put it in the full URL here, again, you know, just in quotes. Um, and then also this name has to be unique across all of your different pods. So if you make this into a dynamic task, make sure that you're changing the name dynamically between tasks because otherwise you will have some issues. Um, and there's also some uh, you know, other different uh, fields here as well you can use to kind of customize the size, the volume, container resources, CPU, request memory, exactly like I just said. Just go on the Airflow documentation, you can see kind of all the different fields you can customize, but pretty much any customizations you want to make with the Kubernetes pod operator, you can do here as well. And so once you're all set up there, then we will take it over into the Airflow UI and show you what this actually looks like running. But before we actually run it, we're going to need to create our connection. And so that's where that JSON we created earlier actually comes into play. Um, so the old way of doing this was you would reference that file and pull it in uh, at runtime, but that was super annoying and didn't really make a lot of sense to me. So my man Rocco Pascal uh, actually created this or showed me this way where you can use the uh, connection management UI to uh, actually establish your connection to that k cluster. So you'll notice uh, if I just quickly go back here, it's using the Kubernetes uh, connection ID k uh, So that is what I have named my connection ID within uh, the connection UI. And then here, if I go to edit the record, see I'm going to choose the Kubernetes cluster connection. And then all you're gonna do is just copy and paste that JSON file I had you create earlier. Um, so your example JSON here, copy all of this and then just paste it into this uh, kubeconfig JSON format here. Uh, and then it will use all this information, obviously save it, uh, to run your DAG. And so then on the topic of actually running our DAG, let's go do that. So here, if I go run this DAG and give it a couple seconds, do, 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 do. let's hope it runs live and boom, it did. So then here, if I go into my logs here, you can see I have my Kubernetes pod was executed. Um, so here I have uh, pod yet not yet started, then it was started, and you can see here base hello from Docker. This message shows your installation seems to be working correctly, um, and that's what that hello world Docker image does. It just prints out a very simple message saying, hey, this Docker pod started correctly, prints out that it started correctly, and then kills itself. Um, so super, super useful uh, for when you just want to test, hey, am I able to pull stuff from a Docker registry? Am I able to start it? Because there's very little startup time for this pot, uh, for this image. Just quickly start up, run it, and get that uh, either failure or success state very quickly. And then, you know, if you get a failure, you'll just get something like this where it's going to say, hey, you know, the connection didn't work. Um, 
But otherwise, if you followed all my steps correctly, you should be off to the races, you should have this running, and then you can just swap out that Hello World image for whatever image you want to use um, just by putting the URL to your custom image uh, within there. And that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this has made at least one person's life easier. Uh, and I hope all of you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out. Peace.